been? What have you been doing? I have tried to become a better human being. <laughs> a lot you missed. Oh. You've got a lot of fixing to do. Hi, welcome to What the Flick. I am Christy Lemire. My great friend Tim Grierson is here, now of the New Republic, always of Screen International. Thank you for joining me. Of course, my pleasure. It's a weird week. Um, people are in and out because it's South by Southwest, but there's a movie that you should see that Tim and I have seen, and it's called Cresha. I'm going to explain it to you. It's what? In really, really limited release, I want to say. Right? Yeah, I think only like New York and Los Angeles. Okay, yeah. but it will it will go elsewhere. It's this, it's a small little weird kind of awesome indie. So it is about a family, and Kresha Fairchild plays a woman named Kresha who goes to visit her family on Thanksgiving. They're somewhere in suburban Houston, like the Woodlands, I want to say, and she shows up, and everyone's like overly gushy and nice and happy to see her at first, and then slowly but surely, old resentments and tensions um, bubble to the surface, and all hell breaks loose. Take a look. <laughs> I just want to be close to you and make up for lost time. I have stayed away while I was healing myself. You are a lever. You are heartbreak incarnate. If you think you can just pop in and pop out of people's lives like this, you are malinformed. You don't know who I am. You don't know anything about what I'm here trying to do. What's going on with you? Which I totally hate spinning. So I saw this a long time ago. <laughs> We both saw this a long time ago. I saw it back in October when I was on the Gotham Awards nominating committee, and we considered it for, for some awards for that. And um, it is a really kind of great, low-budget, like, doing a lot without a lot of money. Right. right? The director, Trey Edward Schultz, is the writer and director. His first feature. Right. And it's based on, I haven't seen the short that it's based mm -hmm. on, but it's based on a short that he had done, mm -hmm. kind of the same sort of storyline. And... This movie won the Cassavetes Award for the Indie Spirit Awards okay. uh, back in February. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of appropriate because it's such a Cassavetes film in a right. lot of ways. It feels improvised. And the woman, uh, Cresha Fairchild, who you said is his aunt mm -hmm. in real life, she plays his mother. She has addiction problems. She has all these sort of issues. The family doesn't really want her around. And it has some of that kind of like psychological tension that I feel like Cassavetes films have. Mm -hmm. She's sort of the stand-in for Jenna Rollins. Mm -hmm. She's no Jenna Rollins, but you know, no. she's kind of the stand-in in terms of that type of character. And then the breakdown that occurs over the course right. of the film. Yeah. yeah, this is very much sort of a, uh, you know, it's, it's that kind of character. And, you know, I think that it's, it's like Cassavetes meets Terrence Malick, I feel like, in a lot of ways. <laughs> yes, it's because, artful. Yeah. Because it has, it has kind of like these floating cameras. I mean, there's not the type of things where, like, out in nature and kind of communing with the woods and mm -hmm. like that. It's more of this kind of, like, cameras floating around this big house in Texas mm -hmm. as you kind of drop in on different family members and sort of observe them. And I think for like a first feature, it's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. It does have, I think, kind of certain self-indulging kind of qualities to it in terms of you can tell when actors and some of these people are non-professional. I think pretty much they all are not, yeah. except for he, he stars in it. Right. But he's... Yeah, he plays the estranged yeah. son who mm -hmm. isn't exactly happy that his mom is back. Right. Um, and most of the actors, like you said, they're kind of non-professionals and they kind of feel that way. And it also, like the way they kind of improvise their dialogue. It's a type of movie where I have a sense that parts of this movie are autobiographical or semi-autobiographical. Mm -hmm. And you feel like Trey Edward Schultz is in some ways working through issues perhaps in his own life right. or in his family's life. And so sometimes you feel like you're watching a very well done therapy session in terms of in terms <laughs> It's of uncomfortable the in that regard. Like yeah. the, the intimacy of it and the rawness and the honesty of some of the emotions. But also, yeah, you're right. You mentioned the floating camera work. There's one really cool scene in the kitchen. It's this, right. this big ass like Texas McMansion and in this giant kitchen with an island in the middle, like he goes around and around and around and around the island. You see everybody and um, she starts drinking and she starts trying to cook and bad things happen and, and the, the movement of the camera kind of mirrors the increasing insanity that's occurring in the house and right. it's sort of a virtuoso bit of camera work there for somebody yeah. who's not really done a whole lot. Yeah, and it's also, I think, also kind of self-conscious and sort of, kind of so? showing. I mean, I think it works. But, but I also, liked it. I think it works, but I do think it falls into that category of 
a filmmaker who's trying to show off a little bit, mm -hmm. which is not bad, but definitely has that feeling of a first time filmmaker. Mm -hmm. You know, in certain ways, the movies overall arc about dysfunctional families and how families have like that black sheep and how people kind of deal with that. That's not necessarily like a new or novel concept for a film, but I think what Christian, Christian Fairchild does so well in the movie is he's keep going darker and darker and darker in terms of that character and really kind of showing just the depths of what is what is wrong with her. Because I think if initially you think she seems a little. Kind of strange. Uh, yeah, she seems a little. I don't want to kind of ruin anything for people who are going to see the movie. But it's not simply that she's sort of an odd duck. She does have certain kind of demons that she's dealing mm -hmm. with. And I think the Christian Fairchild does a really great job of just kind of plumbing the depths of this character. In some ways, you've seen this movie, but sort of the extent and the depth that the movie goes. I think is actually pretty rare and that you haven't seen. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a fly on the wall kind of train wreck element to it. Like, oh my God, how much worse can this get? And yeah, you mentioned that she has demons. She does some horrible and selfish things, but she's also, she's damaged and she makes you feel for her and there's a great vulnerability to her. So um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty complicated film given that it's like low budget and in this guy's family's house and he does a lot with a little very effectively, I would yeah. say. So I'm curious to see what else he will do. What is your number? I gave it a 7.5. Okay, I'm saying 7.9, so our average is 7.7. .7. It's at 95% on the tomato meters. This is a really a solid little indie, so if it's coming anywhere near you, you want something kind of different and small and cool and strange, go see Grisha.